creepy little games. Hey everybody, just a quick reminder that if you enjoy this content or any of my videos, be sure and leave a like. It helps support the channel and allows my videos to move it on up with YouTube's algorithm. Thanks again. Ever since video games have been a thing, developers have been trying to scare the pants off of consumers all across the world. One of the earliest examples would be the classic game Haunted House on the Atari 2600. While not a fright fist as other games would turn out to be, it still provided a little bit of ambiance, especially if you were up playing it at 2 a.m. There have been other numerous games throughout the years that would attempt to put a quiver in your liver with a little bit of gore and just a hint of the supernatural. Some of my favorites over the years include Splatter House, Maniac Mansion, Alone in the Dark, Silent Hill, and Resident Evil. Arcades would also offer up some spine-tingling tales including Chiller, the House of the Dead, and the dark, twisted game we are talking about today, Carnival. This ooky, kooky, spooky, first-person light gun shooter brought elements of the supernatural to arcades everywhere. What popular movie helped influence the designs of this game? What popular 1960s TV show also helped influence the characters in this title? What famous superhero director helped create certain cutscenes for this game? So ratchet those shotguns and don't be afraid because this is the history of Carnival. In the mid-1990s, Midway was riding high both on home consoles and in arcades everywhere. This was thanks to the huge success of his Mortal Kombat franchise as well as a couple of other successful gun games. The first of which was Terminator 2 Judgment Day and the other one was the Aerosmith-led Revolution X. Because these titles were so successful they were looking to fill an opening in the production slot and was looking for another gun game. The man with the plan was Jack E. Hager. Mr. Hager had been working with Eugene Jarvis, who had also created classics such as Defender and Robotron, and inspiration struck while they were in the middle of working on the arcade title NARC. This 1988 classic was one of the first games to use digitized sprites, and during this process, Mr. Hager first started working with stop-motion puppets so he could create something closer to a movie experience. Growing up, he was a huge fan of classic horror movies where pesky teenagers would dare their friends to run through a graveyard. This idea percolated in the back of Mr. Hager's mind for a few years until the time was right. One of his earliest sketches dated 1989 was for something called Horror Show with the Haunted House, Creepy Clown, Two Scared Teenagers, and the word Carnival written on the side. He knew the technology wasn't quite there to pull off something so advanced, but by the mid-1990s, the technology had finally started to catch up. According to Mr. Hager, The technology just wasn't there when I first conceptualized this game. I knew we couldn't quite pull it off, but I loved the concept. Starting from a dark ride theme, you're strapped into a car and riding on a rail, shooting at pop-up targets. An evil carnival theme had a lot of potential. Although Midway was looking for another gun game, they initially passed on Mr. Hager's design. The original design was more of a Disney Haunted Mansion feel featuring an old caretaker and a Punch and Judy style traditional puppet. Management gave them a very harsh no, so the team decided to start over. At this point, they decided to come up with characters who were more aggressive and also injected with a bit of dark humor. The first design to come out of this brainstorm process was a revamp of Hambone, a big hulking beast of a man with a Jason-style hockey mask and a Gatling gun for an arm. This initial concept set the tone for the game. 
The title was created by a team of designers from both the pinball and arcade game divisions. One of the artists and 3D character designers was Scott Pakulski, who helped create the 40-plus characters that populated Carnival, which had to be built in 3D Studio Max. According to Mr. Pakulski, Many ideas for characters and level content came from us just joking around while working on the game. It always felt like the project would be cancelled at any time, so we worked on it like we had nothing to lose. In fact, inspirations for these characters and the actual game design itself came from a wide variety of places. Everything from Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, the black and white photo book Fellini's Faces, and even an episode of the 1960s TV show The Avengers. No, not those Avengers, which follows two murderous, gleefully sinister clowns. The original Haunted Mansion pitch was more of a real target shooter but featured much less graphic violence. Since Mortal Kombat was breaking spines and also breaking records, they decided to add a bit of shock factor by putting in blood and gore. Mr. Pakulski was responsible for many of the game's goriest effects. In 1998, the 3D modeling they used was pretty basic, but it felt very cutting edge for an arcade game. Having twisted character designs is not enough as you have to have a storyline to back them up. Thankfully, this one is just creepy enough. Any fan of haunted houses or ghostly thrill rides will definitely get a few goosebumps on their buttocks because the visuals appear macabre. Even the cabinet art, which was designed by Daniel Bigelow, lets you know you are in for a trippy ride if you dare to insert a token. The green and purple shotguns with all its delicate electronics were packed inside, but designed in such a way so that it could take a licking but keep on ticking. The backgrounds themselves are full motion video while the enemies are 3D models. This was very difficult getting a polygon character model to fit properly within the backdrop, especially with technology in the late 1990s. There were a few cases where live actors were used, such as the character of Smeek, who was portrayed by someone fully suited up. During the opening attract scene, the local legend from Greeley Valley, Iowa sets the stage for the terrifying experience in store. When the moon is full and trees are bare, walk through the cemetery if you dare, where skeletons rot and corpses fester. Locate the tomb with the skull of a jester, feed even the token all shiny and new. It is then that Carnival will return for you. The focus test for this game was through the roof and the game was finally set for release. Carnival was released on Halloween Day 1998. As the story goes, you are an unnamed teen taking a ghostly hayrack ride courtesy of Spooky Sam in the town of Greeley Valley, Iowa. Halfway through the ride, you jump off and find the gravestone of Ringmaster Professor Ludwig von Tokentocker. Urban legend has it that if you insert a gold token into the jester's mouth on top of the gravestone, strange things will occur. Swallowing your fear, you insert a token into the slot which results in a haunted amusement park rising from the ground. You are immediately trapped inside, so you take a shotgun from the shooting gallery to kill the waves upon waves of zombies and monsters in order to escape. This is a one or two player on rails light gun extravaganza which has to be experienced to truly appreciate. Scary movie fans will feel right at home with its creepy visuals and innovative character designs. Token Talker Sidekick and your host with the most umlaut appears throughout the game, taunting you with his various rhymes. It's the Freak Show, the Freak Show, see the strange and bizarre. Step right up, we love to see you. We think you could be the star. <laughs> you have your trusty pump action shotgun, which differs slightly from other light gun games at the time. The game takes place across four levels with a mini-boss at the end of each one. 
Upon starting up the game, you are presented with three different levels to choose from. Haunted House, Rickety Town, and Freak Show can be played in any order, but you can't reach the final level until you defeat these three. Once you defeat them, it's on to the big top where the big boys play. The gameplay is your typical arcade light gun shooter, but there are some differences. Rather than having to shoot off the screen to reload, you actually have to pump the shotgun, which helps differentiate itself. It's also a bit more engaging rather than shooting off screen. You have a life bar, which obviously decreases with the more hits you take. Thankfully, littered throughout the levels are health and weapon power-ups, and these include machine guns, flamethrowers, shotguns, and an acid bath gun. There is also an upgrade to increase the magazine capacity for your standard gun. Rather than shooting a standard medipack as in other games, the power-ups come in the shape of, what else, a human heart. The acid bath gun is the best weapon in the game. This will kill enemies almost instantly, but it comes at a price as it only has 18 shots and only available on Rickety Town. Unless you're using a cheat. The gore factor has been cranked up to 11 thanks to the sadistic minds at Midway. Every enemy in the game is a sight to behold, and the bosses even more so. You'll encounter everything from Evil Marie, who is a Victorian madam and has a bloodied axe to go along with her 3D jiggle physics, as well as Junior, who is quite disturbing to say the least. He is a giant toddler that you need to repeatedly shoot in order to progress. You have to watch out for his vomit of doom, among other things. When the game was first shown to distributors, certain ones were put off by having to literally shoot a baby to death. Thanks to this reaction, the programmers included dip switches allowing operators to swap out Junior for Daddy. Daddy is a giant crazed stuffed bear with all of the same attacks. Operators have different options available when it comes to the violence. The color of blood can be changed from red to green, and the flamethrower and acid bath gun can be replaced with a standard machine gun. Gaping holes, spurting arteries, exposed bones, and creepy circus folk are what's on display, so player beware. Lifelike violence strong reads the blood red label on the cabinet, and they weren't kidding. Similar to other light gun games, you have to watch out for the hostages. Betty is your friend and has chosen to tag along on Spooky Sam's Ghost Tour. Throughout the course of the game, she shows up 17 different times. At various points, she is in the clutches of a nasty enemy and you have to free her. Other times, she pops up at the most inopportune moments. If you do shoot her, it does take away some of your health bar. The enemies in the game are vast and varied, including such goofballs as the standard zombie, Smeek, Carney, Dr. Clot, Flem the Fly, Maggot Mike, Smiling Bob, Mame, Mr. Ozob, Guillotine, and more. The levels you encounter are Haunted House, Freak Show. Rickety Town. And the big top. Oh, 
some of the bosses you encounter are Umlaut. Evil Marie. Hambone. Krampus. Junior. And the final boss of the game, Professor Ludwig von Tokentalker. If you manage to survive and take down Tokentalker, a not so nice ending sequence is shown. When the game was released, it shot to the top of the charts with sales even exceeding the Mortal Kombat 4 arcade title. Enough can't be said for the fantastic graphics which also include the opening and closing cutscenes. These were created by Blur Studio which was run by director Tim Miller. Mr. Miller also brought us the fantastic Deadpool movies. For some odd reason, it was long thought that voice actor Frank Welker, who plays Fred on Scooby-Doo, provided the voice of Umlaut, but that wasn't the case. Mr. Hager voiced the character himself, as well as the opening narration, Token Talker, and many more. One of the only characters to appear in costume was Smeek, who was played by Stevie Lee, also known as Puppet the Psycho Dwarf. The music is absolutely perfect with creepy tunes playing all throughout. The There are a few easter eggs here and there such as the infamous Bat Boy appearing in the big top level. A big hat mode was also included which shows the zombies sporting a number of different hats as well as afros. There are a number of famous paintings in the background such as Memento Mori to this favor and also an edited version of the painting Lady with a Harp which uses Evil Marie instead. Inside the museum, there are a number of oddities on display, and one of them is a strange-looking cyclops entitled Frozen in Time. This is actually the caveman Trog who has his own arcade game that was also created by Jack Hager. Something else you can see is Salty Jack, which is a parody of the Cracker Jack Kid. Mr. Hager also considered using a ventriloquist dummy as the narrator. Thanks to the Cutting Room Floor website, there were a number of changes to various parts of the game which are buried deep inside the game's code. For example, Evil Marie was going to be known as Lady Chastity and Junior was known as Big Baby. Changes to the level names also include Rickety Town being known as Mr. Rickety and Freak Show known as Freak Show Chamber of Horrors. A rocket launcher was going to be included as a weapon, but it was cut from the final release. 
There is also a rather peculiar image of Madman Jeffrey Dahmer holding a severed head of Neil Nicastro, who was the producer on this game as well as the CEO of Midway Games. A number of fantastic pieces of concept art have been shown off over the years. These include some surprising different takes on the beloved characters and levels. Despite this game's success, it was never converted to any home systems. Plans were afoot to create a brand new adventure for the home market utilizing this IP. However, this never came to pass. After Midway realized how successful the game turned out to be, it was planned to become a 4D ride that you could see in amusement centers all across the world. According to Mr. Hager, the broad concept was that you'd enter Greeley Valley Cemetery on the haunted hayride with several of your friends. Trapped inside, it was up to you to rescue everyone before sunrise. Bonus waves including a river ride were also included. Similar to the other home console release, this never came to be. The actual town of Greeley Valley, Iowa was actually inspired by the small town of Greeley, Iowa, complete with an old creepy cemetery. The game was shown very quickly in the TV show Shameless. The game is still fondly remembered and modders have taken it upon themselves to bring the game into the 21st century. Derek Davison has recreated the game in full VR. This was created using the Unity engine and includes not only the original levels and power-ups, but also new weapons such as twin machine guns, rocket launchers, sticks of dynamite, and more. It's due to be released on October 31st and it's going to be free to play, but you can always help support the project with donations. I will leave a link in the description down below. While it still looks fantastic to this day, going over the game while making this video with a fine tooth comb, I noticed that a lot of the background details would become lost and it was hard to see because everything moves so fast. A 4K release would definitely be awesome. If you're lucky enough to see this in the wild, you should definitely give it a go. Galloping Ghost in Chicago has it on display, so if you are ever near the Windy City, stop by and play a few games. It is available on the main emulator using a mouse instead of a light gun. This game is a lot of fun to play, especially for light gun aficionados and anybody who likes weird, creepy little things. The game has a definite twisted sense of humor, but if you can get past all that, what lies beneath is a fun little shooter. If you've never had the chance to fight vomiting babies all the while trying to reach a big giant circus tent, be sure and give this game a literal shot. You'll be glad you did. Big shout out to the website Greeley Valley Cemetery which has a number of concept designs and other little tidbits on this game. There is even a fantastic guide to getting the game running on MAME. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you can always click the donate button up above. Thanks everyone for watching.